Welcome to all present today to the celebration of St. Lucia's 43rd anniversary of independence. We thank you for your bravery and your loyalty in challenging the cold weather and the high wind to be here with us this morning, or this afternoon rather. Your presence warms our hearts and your presence also helps to create a spiritual atmosphere for our service, as is always the case when God's people come together in worship. The theme of our anniversary this year, as composed by the government of St. Lucia, is Duvant Ensemble. A Creole phrase, Duvant Ensemble, meaning in English, we are moving forward together. I will now call upon Ms. Penny Griffith, representing the Consulate General of St. Lucia, to deliver a special welcome. On behalf of the Consul General, Consul General of St. Lucia, I would like to wish a warm welcome to all dignitaries celebrating with us today. Members of the Consular Corps of Toronto, Ms. Anne-Marie Lane, Consul General, representing the Consulate General of Antigua and Barbuda, joining us virtually. Mr. Jorge Yanye Castellanos Otta, Consul General, representing the Consulate General of Cuba, also joining us virtually. Mr. Gerald White, Consul General, representing the Consulate General of Guyana, joining us virtually, Ms. Tracy Ramsubag Manette, Consul General, representing the Consulate General of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Tudor Alexis, Consul General, representing the Consulate of France. Mr. David Gibbs, Consul, representing the Consulate General of Barbados. Ms. Brenda Foreman, Honorary Consul, representing the Consulate General of St. Kitts and Nevis. Ms. Oxana Olova, Vice Consul, representing the Consulate General of Russia. Mr. Edwin Pascal, Liaison Officer, representing the OECS Liaison Office. Ms. Ioana obaiza Mormon, President of the St. Lucia Toronto Association. Ms. Kathleen Matagas, Secretary of the St. Lucia Toronto Association, joining us virtually. Ms. Gloria Beausoleil, Past President of the St. Joseph's Convent Alumni. Ms. Debbie Lay, 
past president of the St. Lucia Toronto Association, joining us virtually, Mr. Malcolm Hitson, past president of the St. Lucia Toronto Association. I also wish to welcome dignitaries joining us from St. Lucia via Zoom, all ambassadors and panel panelists. Unfortunately, despite Consul General Mangal's desire to be present in person, several administrative and other factors conspired to delay his arrival in Canada. However, despite these challenges, he is with us via Zoom and will be delivering his independence message as scheduled on the program. Thank you, Penny. Allow me to also extend a warm welcome to an even larger number of nationals and friends of St. Lucia joining us through the amazing platform of Zoom and other platforms, uh, live streaming, right there into your homes. We hope you will be just as involved and attentive to the service as we are here in the church so that we can all enjoy the benefits and the blessings to come. It is also right that we, with sincerity of heart, express our gratitude to those who have allowed us and welcomed us to live and to thrive in this new homeland, the indigenous people of Canada, our land acknowledgement. Out of our deep respect for the indigenous people of Canada, we acknowledge that Our Lady of Good Council Church Building is situated upon traditional territories of the Anishabek, the Hananusinak Confederacy, and the Wendat peoples. We also acknowledge the land covered by Treaty 13 is held by the Mississaugas of the Great Credit First Union, and Toronto is subject to the dish with a one spoon covenant. We also recognize the contributions and the enduring presence of all First Nations, the Métis, the Inuit peoples of Ontario, and the rest of Canada. My friends, whenever we gather together as a community, it is always right and just that we remember, remember our beloved dead, those trailblazers who've paved the way for us to thrive and live in peace and harmony in this home away from home. We will now have a moment of silence in honor of our ancestors. Father in heaven, God of all creation, Look with favor upon your island nation as we pledge to move forward together. Bless her people in body, mind, and spirit that they may henceforth enjoy a future of peace and prosperity. Bless our land that it may produce in abundance, providing food so that no one will go hungry. We pray, Father, that you will continue to protect our beautiful island from nature's wrath. Protect her from the damage of hurricanes and storms, as you have so mercifully done in the past. Keep her safe until the storms of destruction pass her by. We pray that her leaders, those who govern over your people, that they may help them to rule in a spirit of integrity and justice. Bless them with the firm desire to bring an end to the violence and crime that has plagued our nation in recent years. We invoke your blessings upon our new shepherd, most Reverend Gabriel Malzair. May he lead the church in St. Lucia into a spirit of renewal, bringing light where there is darkness to transform the church into the true body of Christ, giving glory to God the Father. From the very beginning of her existence, Fair Helen has been the victims of so many wars and strife. We pray, Father, that as we now choose to move forward together, that her people may experience a newness of life, a life of prosperity, peace, and unity. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please be seated. My dear friends, most of us have been away from home for so such a very long time. We now tend to consider our new homeland, the home of our choice, we now call it home. And of course, this is natural and understandable. So just to help us sort of reacquaint our lives with the spirit of being St. Lucians, which we still are, we hope this song will deepen our appreciation of, and we hope this song will strengthen our affection for the land where we were born. I invite you now to listen, enjoy, and sing along to the land where I was born. This land I call my home. 
you're thinking, we all wish to be back in St. Lucia this time. I'm sure that's the general feeling, but God willing, we will grow where we're planted, right here in Toronto. That's where the God, has pl God has placed us. And now our service will begin. I invite you to please stand as we enter into the Word of God. Our first reading will be read for us by Mrs. Teresa Alsi. My first reading is from Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40. The Lord said, Sorry. The Lord said, they asked the Lord, Teacher, which of the, the great commandments is the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord and with all your heart and soul and of your mind, then this is the first commandment and the great commandment. And he second it with this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, there's two commandments hang on the law and the prophets. Praise be to God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Mrs. Janine Alsi will now share with us a reflection in response to this reading. Good day to all. So we've all heard the scripture that was read. When I was asked to do a reflection on loving one another, I wondered what scripture Holy Spirit would drop into my heart because throughout the scriptures, love 
is paramount. And it's prevalent that we have been mandated to love one another. This sounds simple, right? Or is it? Let's face facts. People are sometimes difficult to love. Sometimes they're just irritating. Even our own church brothers and sisters are sometimes hard to love. Our spouses, our blood relatives can also sometimes prove difficult to love. Much less for us to show love to someone that we don't even know. So we can all agree that sometimes it's hard to love one another, right? Yet, the Bible mandates it. In 1 John 3.11, the Bible says, For this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Now, we may say, well, I love because I serve at my church. I attend service regularly. I don't steal or cheat. I give to charity. I feed the poor and take care of the elderly. I am an all-around good person. (laughs) And that's all good and well. But you can do all of this and still not do it out of love. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 3, it says, If you donate all your goods to feed the poor and give your body in order to boast, but have no love, then you've gained nothing. So just imagine doing all of this only to find out that you've gained nothing out of it because you didn't do it out of love. Wow. (laughs) I don't know about you, but the mere thought of it scares me. You see, whilst reading our opening scripture in Matthew 22, verse 36 to 40, I wondered, why is love so important? Why not obedience? After all, the Bible does say we should obey the commandments. So shouldn't our mandates be to obey, but then I realized in Romans 13.10, Christ himself states that love is the fulfillment of the law. So what does that mean? Or rather, what does the fulfillment of the law truly looks like? Well, let's think about it for a while and try to put it into context. The commandments are the law, right? And I know some will debate that the commandments are Old Testament teachings, and we are now living in the New Testament. Some may even use this as a basis for saying that the Bible is confusing because in the Old Testament, it says obey the commandments. Now in the New Testament, it's basically all we need is love. So the commandments are no longer relevant for us today. But I say to you, in all actuality, that it is even more relevant because truly love fulfills the law. Let's look at it. If you love your neighbor, you will not covet his wife, right? If you love your spouse, you won't commit adultery. If you love someone, you won't steal from them or even try to kill them, and so on and so forth. So you see, if we truly love one another, then we fulfill all the commandments. But you see, God has called us to love one another because it is our love that will set us apart. In John 13 and verse 35 reads, by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Now notice, Christ didn't say that people will know that we are his disciples if we serve in every ministry in the church or if we walk around wearing our printed scripture outfits or constantly posting scriptures on social media. He didn't even say that they will know that we are his disciples if we know the scriptures from cover to cover. 
He didn't say any of this. Rather, he said that they will know that we are his disciples if we have love for one another. So how do we do this? We do this by showing one another the same love that God has shown to us. Let's face it. We sin daily, and yet God forgives us. He loves us. He constantly shows his love to us, even when we don't deserve it. Now just imagine, because we're all human, right? So just imagine if God would have decided to treat us the same way that we would treat one another, the same way we would treat our neighbors when they wrong us. Most of us, maybe all of us, would be dead by now. Now, I know what you're thinking. We're all sinners, and therefore, we cannot love one another like Christ loved us. And unfortunately, you would be right. Because it is impossible for us to fulfill this through our own strength. Rather, we need to seek God's help and guidance. It is only then can we truly learn how to love one another. For love is not merely a feeling. Love is taking an active interest in the well-being of others when there is no benefit to you. Love is not being quick to anger or quick to judge. Rather, we need to take things to God first. Because we cannot love one another like Christ loves us unless we open our hearts to Christ. Therefore, it is time to seek him. Seek him first. Seek him that we may be able to share his love with one another. For Christ is the embodiment of love. So the next time you choose to have that office disagreement, ask, what would love do? Before you pick up that weapon, ask yourself, what would love do? The next time you have those negative thoughts towards one another, sit back and ask yourself, what would love do? Because this is the only way that we can break the hold of the enemy in our lives, in our youth, in our governments, in our relationships, and most of all, in our sweet island, St. Lucia as a whole. At this point, I would like you all to just stand with me as I say a short prayer. Father God, we come before your presence today, O oh Lord. Father, asking that our hearts are receptive, receptive to your word, receptive to your mandate of love. Father, I ask that you open our eyes of understanding, O oh Father, that we may understand that you are love, and if we truly love you, that we will love one another. For how can we say that we love you and not love your creation, not love your brother and sister that we see daily? Father God, we ask, O oh Lord, that you continue, O oh Father. You continue to shine your light upon us, O oh Father, that we may come to know you, that we may come to know your love, that we may be able to in turn show that love, share that love with one another. Amen. Mamai said, Lisi, Anu pose, Anu uve chenu, E kite jezi kwi, A twe adida. Se sa nu ni pou fe, Pou nu sa, you may be seated.
My dear friends, the apostles asked Jesus, teach us to pray. He taught them, and he gave us the beautiful prayer we call the Lord's Prayer. However, may I suggest that we rename it to our prayer. Because this prayer, prayed daily, will certainly guarantee that we will have the grace and the strength to truly move forward together as a nation. So let us listen to that beautiful prayer, the Lord's Prayer, our Creole. Our Father, on nous dit yon papa nous qui dans ciel là. Papa nous qui dans ciel là. C'est pour respecter nous. C'est pour reconnaître c'est où qui roi. C'est pour volonté ou faite sous terre tant qu'on dans ciel. Pain nous besoin chaque jour, ba nous li jodi a. Pa donne ça nous faire. Tant qu'on nous pas donné mon qui fait nous qui chaud. Pas quitter nous prendre un piège. Mais délivrez-nous avec ça qui mal. Amen. pray that this very inspiring reflection from Sister Janine will resonate in our hearts and help us to transform our lives from self-centeredness to selflessness as we offer our lives in loving service to God through loving service to one another. Now, in keeping with our desire to move forward together, I now present to you a fast assuring Joseph who will deliver to us a sermon on unity. Joseph? Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? I know we come here and we all a bit quiet, but who I am and where I'm from, I believe that we need to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we magnify his name? Praise God, praise God. I take this humble opportunity to greet the presence of the living God, Jesus Christ, which is in our midst. Jesus Christ is the reason for my living. He is the foundation where I stand and the head of my life. In addition, I would like to bring greetings to all the dignitarians, those that is with us in person and virtually to the Consulate General and their entire staff, I bring greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To uh, DJ Toxic, God bless you, sir. And to my wonderful friend here, Sister Yorna, God bless you. To each and every one of you and my brother that is at the back, uh, Minister Michael Malcolm, God bless you, sir. Greetings to each and every one of you. As we on the subject matter, that we need to move forward. Duvant Assam. We got to understand that there is no way we can move together, forward together, if we are not in unity. There is no way nous move duvant Assam et nous pas really Assam. And so we are divided in so many different ways. Then I believe after this message, 
that we all will get an understanding that we need to be united in order for us to move forward together. If you're able, you read from your Bibles from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, and I will read from the verse 9 to the verse 13. For clarification, I will repeat again Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to the verse 13. The Bible read dust, and I quote, After this manner, therefore pray he, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us and forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would like us to pay close attention on the verse 10. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I think one of the biggest problems that we face individually, collectively, is the fact that we are very busy doing our own thing and not seeking the divine will of God here on earth. Not seeking the divine will of God in our personal matters, in the matters of our community, in the matters of our country. But we understand the Bible is the manual of life. And everything that we need is in the Bible. Every problem that you can think of is in the Bible. Likewise, every solution is in the Bible. Here God is instructing us that we should pray this prayer, that his kingdom come on earth, and his will be done on earth. Many times when we go about doing our own thing, we don't take note or take time to pray and seek the divine will of God to find out, God, what is your will in this season? What is your will for the country? What is your will for the community? But we just go about doing our own thing in our own selfish desire. As the sister just spoke about love, we are so much in the love of ourselves and not the love of our fellow brothers and sisters. And so whatever we do, we try to do it for self-gain because we are so in tune in loving ourselves and not loving each other. But when we talk about, or the Bible talks about the kingdom of God here on earth, you have to ask yourself the question, what it really means by the kingdom of God here on earth. When the kingdom of God is manifested here on earth, basically the fruit of the spirit is being manifested. And you may ask, what is the fruit of the spirit? You can find that in Galatians chapter 5 from the verse 22 to the verse 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. When you have love, you have long suffering, you have meekness, when the fruit of the spirit of God begins to manifest in our midst, then there is no law against that. No longer will the spirit of division comes in our midst that keeps us stagnant. Because once you see a country is stagnant, a community is stagnant, or even a family is stagnant, it is because there is a lack of the fruit of the Spirit of God. Because when we have the Spirit of God in our midst, we have to move forward. It is no joke. When God is in the midst, you can smile at the storm. When God is in our midst, it doesn't matter what hardship you face. Not even COVID-19 can stop a nation when the Spirit of God is with them. A lot of people is complaining how COVID-19 has damaged a whole lot of things. But can I tell you something? There is quite a few people that is even sitting in a pew today that can testify 
that COVID-19 has even been more a blessing to them than that of a curse. Why? It is simply because they endeavor to walk in the spirit realm of God. And when the fruit of the spirit is in you, you have to move forward. As we on the theme, du vin à sam. Du vin à sam. For those of you who don't understand in the Creole language, it means forward together. How can we move forward if we are divided amongst ourselves? Let us read the Bible. The Bible tells me in the book of Mark chapter 3 from the verse 24. It says, and if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. I'm going to read that again for clarification. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. If Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the Bible begins to tell you if a kingdom be divided amongst itself, it cannot stand. If a house be divided amongst itself, it cannot stand. Even Satan, that is the devil, if he is divided amongst himself, he too cannot stand but have an end. My fellow St. Lucians, I come by to let you know that we need to put away the division. We need not to look about political arena and think, okay, because I'm Labour Party, my God, and it's a UWP president or prime minister, I'm not going to work with him or her. Or because I'm a UWP and it's a Labour prime minister, I'm not going to work with him or her. We got to understand that it doesn't matter where you vote. The Bible says power is given by God. No man giveth power, but the Lord Jesus Christ himself give it. Whoever you are and whatever office in which you are working in, it doesn't matter what university you study. It is only by the grace of God you have what you have. It is only by the grace of God you have the breath of life that you have. It is only by the grace of God you did not get COVID-19 and be erased from the surface of this world. And so now we need to put aside our selfishness. We need to put aside our pride. We need to put aside the hatred. We need to put aside the schism. We need to put aside all those things that belongs to the enemy. And let us embrace the spirit of the living God, Jesus Christ. Let us possess the fruit of of his spirit and move forward together. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I am not here to preach something to you that I myself don't endeavor to follow. I am a young man coming from the island of St. Lucia and I'm very proud to be a St. Lucian. Very proud that God have elevated me into where he has put me through. And where I'm standing before you is not because of any good that I have done. It is not because of any good school that I went. But it's because of his grace and his mercy. And I believe it is the same to each and every single one of you. Those of you that is working with the consulate general. And us fellow St. Lucian in this diaspora. We need to understand the same love you gave to the constant general that was before is the same love we need to give to this consulate general. In fact, we need to give the love even better because when you're moving forward together, you must not move the forward in the same manner in which you started. Every time you take a step forward, it has to bring you to a place where you are better in your mind in your heart and in your spirit. You have to move better in your finance. You have to move better in your relationship. So let us endeavor to take this service, not just as a religious thing, but something that will impact our minds, our spirit, that we need to move forward together. The consulate general is not here to do it by himself. The prime minister is not there to do it by himself because I serve you notice. 
He is working with a whole other group of people. There is no way he can serve the diaspora here in Canada without the help of wonderful people that God have put in place. And the people that is in government would not get the opportunity to serve without wonderful people like you and I. Let us stand together, stand in unity, and let us not be divided. And before I take my seat, I would like to bring the definition of unity. Because a lot of times we think unity is dressing together, talking the same way. Really and truly, God created us unique in our own way. The way Sister Cheryl thinks is not the way I will think. The way the past concert general think is not the way this one will think. The way you think is not the way the person sitting beside you will think. We are all unique in our own way. But what makes us move together in unity is when we all believe in the common goal. When we all believe in the one purpose. So ask yourself the question. What is the purpose of us as a nation? What is the purpose of us as a country? What is the purpose of us as a community? It is for us to come together and let that light that is shining from St. Lucia shine everywhere we go. St. Lucia is simply beautiful. She is called a fair Helen of the West Indies. The only country that is named after a woman. And so let us represent St. Lucia as true ambassadors. I am an ambassador of St. Lucia. So are you. Be an ambassador in how you walk. Be an ambassador in how you talk. Be an ambassador in every single thing that you do. So when other countries look at you, that you are very proud of your culture and where you're coming from. But do not do it without the spirit of the living God. Because God created the heavens and the earth. God created you and I. And we cannot move forward without the spirit of the living God. And so if you don't know Jesus Christ, I unction you. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have not received him as your personal Lord and Savior, it is not too late. It is not too late. Because again, violence and crime has taken our country. And without the spirit of God, we cannot do nothing about it. We can pray till thy kingdom come. We can have all different programs put in place. Without the spirit of God, we cannot do nothing. And so as a nation, let us endeavor to seek Christ in everything that we do. God bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father uh, Reverend Sherbin. My friends, now that we know how to live in unity, it is time for us to put it into practice by singing our Christian unity song, the Christian's call to unity, bind us together. Now, under normal circumstances, I would have asked you to stand and hold hands while we sing this beautiful song. However, because of the restrictions of the COVID protocol, we will simply remain in our seats and hopefully you will sing along. Bind us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with
this time we'll pray our prayer to the nations. I will invite, please come up, for our prayer to the nations. Our prayer will be led by Johanna Obeza Moman. Please stand. Heavenly Father, ruler of the nations, we thank you for the countless blessings that you have showered our country. We have sinned often and grievously, and we pray for your mercy. Forgive us for our sins. Endow our leaders with wisdom from on high. Move them to rule in your fear and according to your will, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all. Holiness and honesty, that our nation and its people may prosper both spiritually and temporally. Hold your protecting hands over our people and all your children. Give us faith instead of unbelief, courage instead of fear, peace instead of quarrels and worry, righteousness instead of sin. In your great mercy, be generous to us. Bless us. Hear our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Ohana. Please remain standing for our intercessory prayers. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church in St. Lucia. Heavenly Father, lead her and guide her on the path to holiness. Bless her, our going Archbishop, as we thank him for his loving service to the flock throughout those many years. We pray your blessings on our incoming shepherd, most Reverend Gabriel Malzell. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will strengthen him in his responsibility to the people whom you have placed in his care. Help him to spiritually lead our nation into a new season of peace, unity, and love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the government of St. Lucia, for our recently elected prime minister and all those who assist him in positions of authority. We pray that they will be blessed with integrity of heart and sincerity of spirit, that they will work for the common good and avoid the dangers of self-gain and exaltation. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our youth in St. Lucia and abroad. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to reveal to them the plan you have for their lives and give them the strength and the desire to accomplish that plan. Help them to overcome the obstacles and the discouragement of these changes and uncertain times. Bring them out of the darkness to reclaim their status as children of our light. We pray to the Lord. Pray for the sick. We pray for all our nationals who are sick, for those who are lonely and those who are dis in distress. We pray for those who have lost loved ones as a result of COVID-19 virus, as well as those who lost loved ones through other forms of illness. May the soul of all our loved ones rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Now for our closing benediction.
Lord God, King of heaven and earth, direct our minds and bodies throughout this day and make us all holy. Keep us faithful to your teachings, to your laws in thought, word, and deed. Be our helper now and always. Free us from sin and bring us to salvation in that kingdom where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us continue in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I will now call upon Mylene Foster to introduce to you our new Council General, although virtually. Thank you. The Council General is a proud St. Lucian born in the community of Monripo. His schooling includes St. Aloysius R.C. Boys Primary and St. Mary's College, where he excelled in the academics, cycling, and debating. In 1984, he was St. Mary's top Caribbean Examination Council CXC performer and that same year emerged as Cyclist of the Year at our National Sports Awards. He has a bachelor's degree in accounting from the University of the West Indies Cape Hill Campus and a master's in strategic leadership from the University of Westminster in the United Kingdom. In a voluntary capacity, Mr. Mangal has served as a very dynamic president of the St. Lucia National Youth Council, NYC, from 1993 to 1997. He also served as the chairman, CEO, of the St. Lucia National Lottery, a director of the Windward Islands Lotteries Incorporated, a director of the National Research and Development Foundation, NRDF, chairman of the Sports St. Lucia Incorporated, chairman of the James Belgrave Micro Enterprise Development Fund, Bell Fund, chairman of the National Skills Development Center, NSDC, and as permanent secretary in the Ministry of Youth and Sports. In October 1999, he was elected as a director on the board of the National Commercial Bank, NCB, of St. Lucia. He continued to serve when the NCB merged with the St. Lucia Development Bank in 2001 to form the ECFH and several subsidiaries, including Bank of St. Lucia, BOSL. Mr. Mangal also served as chairman of the Caribbean Association of Audit Committee members. His most recent employment, his most recent employment history includes being operations manager of UNDP Barbados and OECS, and self-employment as a leadership and organizational development consultant. It, it is my distinct honor to introduce our head of mission, our Council General, Henry Mangal. Come to town, I'll take you around, pretty San Lucia. Happy 43rd anniversary of independence to all St. Lucians in Canada. As we observe 43 years of nationhood, we celebrate you for your bravery in breaking out of our small island to make a living and a home for yourself in a strange land. Canada has always been a friend of St. Lucia, even before our independence. 
This friendship and partnership has benefited both St. Lucians and Canadians in several areas, including education, health, tourism, culture, entertainment, law enforcement, and water and other infrastructure. St. Lucians will never forget three magnificent projects contributed by Canada to our country. The Uranora International Airport, the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School, and the Roseau Dam, officially named the John Compton Dam. These projects and others were either completed or conceptualized on the former Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, and so we are confident that his son and current Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is a most fitting conduit to preserve and strengthen the legacy of Canada with St. Lucia. As St. Lucians, we therefore acknowledge, appreciate, and proudly acclaim the contribution of Canada to our development. Sharing a similar history of colonization with St. Lucia, Canada has since our independence opened its doors to St. Lucians and provided opportunities for economic empowerment and development. As a result, thousands of St. Lucians now call Canada home, and to many of you, it is actually the land of your birth. So St. Lucia salutes all of you who took this bold and brave decision to cross the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean and come to Canada to start a new life. It could not have been easy to leave a warm tropical island like St. Lucia and come to the excruciating cold of Canada to work in construction, on farms, in hospitals, in schools, in cities, in police stations, and out on the beat. What you and your parents have done by your decision to move to Canada is to put into practice the spirit of independence, a decision to leave the comfort of home and venture out into the unknown, based solely on the faith that you will make a better life for you and your family, is the essence of independence. It is also a symbol of love for self and family, to strike out on your own, like when two people in love decide to get married, leave their parents' home, and build their own, most times out of nothing at all, as the air supply song goes. So we salute you, our St. Lucian brothers and sisters in Canada, for practically demonstrating and epitomizing the spirit of independence. Even at our Thanksgiving service today, we are blessed with the presence of at least four St. Lucians who portray the essence of our independence. Firstly, Deacon Eustace Beausoleil, who is a qualified teacher, a reform worker, and has been a celebrant at the Prince of Peace and St. Joseph's Roman Catholic Churches. Secondly, the mother and daughter team of Teresa and Jani Alsi, who are prominent lay ministers at Destiny and Dominion Word Ministries. Thirdly, Pastor Shervin Joseph, who preaches at the Church of Jesus Christ Kingdom Connection and heads a charitable organization helping the needy, homeless, impoverished, and incarcerated. And fourthly, Mr. Mr. Krishna William, more popularly known as DJ Toxic, who is a renowned and recognized sound engineer and is taking care of the online streaming of this, of this service. There are many more of you in almost every field of endeavor. Then we have the team at the consulate, the patriots who serve various St. Lucia, Lucia associations, and the many individuals pursuing personal and professional development. To all of you, I say thank you for flying the St. Lucian flag of excellence in Canada. So whether you are a nurse, a teacher, a policeman, or a construction worker, you are an ambassador for St. Lucia in Canada. What you have done and what you are doing is quite similar to what celebrated St. Lucians like our Nobel laureates Arthur Lewis and Derek Walcott have done by breaking out of St. Lucia 
and bursting onto the world stage as the best in economics and literature in their respective eras. So sons and daughters of St. Lucia, wherever you may be roaming in Canada, in Toronto or in Ottawa, in Montreal or in Quebec, in Winnipeg or in Regina, in Calgary or Edmonton, in Vancouver or Victoria, or wherever else you may be, continue to love our island home and always stand proudly at the forefront of excellence. Duvant Assam, celebrating our people. May God bless you, may God bless Canada, and may God forever bless Hopefully we will meet him in person in due time. We look forward to it. My dear friends, on behalf of our St. Lucian community here in Toronto, I would like to express much gratitude for our host, Father Anthony, our newly appointed pastor of Our Lady of Good Council Parish. You know, Father had barely walked through the door when we charged him with that request to use the church for this service this afternoon. And of course, the kind and generous priest I've always known him to be, he graciously approved. You know, until just a few weeks ago, Father Tony was the associate pastor at my parish at uh, St. Joe's Highland Creek. And I'm proud to report to this parish that he's now been blessed. This parish is now blessed if a fantastic and dynamic preacher. What a preacher he is. Uh, this church has been designated as a spiritual home for all Caribbean people. And our St. Lucian community has been worshiping here for several years, from as long as I have been or here, from the early 70s. We have had all our celebrations right here. We even had our, um, our anniversary galas, our dances, right here in the basement downstairs, and those were good times. Of course, Tony and Malcolm Hinks would remember those days. They were very involved in the community. So um, this has been a very, very important institution for us, my friends. So I pray that you will continue to support this parish. I, enc I encourage you to lend a hand in support of this parish whenever and however you can. Our Lady of Good Counsel needs our financial support, especially in light of these recent pandemic restrictions. At this time, we will have our national pledge. I will call upon Donius Joseph to lead us in our pledge. And also, we will have followed by our national anthems. So we'll have those who are singing to please come up. Please stand. With God as my guide, I pledge allegiance to my country, St. Lucia. I, I proclaim that I will serve my country with pride and dignity and will defend it in vigor and valor in the pursuit of excellence, justice, and equality for all. At this time, we will have the Canadian national anthem sung by Marika. Michaela Alce Gagnon and she will be singing it en français. Oh, Canada, terre de nos aïeux, tant franc et ciel de fleurs en glorieux, car ton pas est porté la croix ton histoire est une épopée de publiants exploits et ta valeur de voile trompée protégera nos foyers no doit protéger no foyer no doit 
please remain standing for our closing hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Please join us in singing our national anthem. Sons and daughters of St. Lucia, love the land that gave us birth. Land of beaches, hills and valleys, fairest and of all the earth. Wheresoever you may roam, love, O oh love, our island home. Gone the times when nations battled for this Helen of the West. Gone the days when strife and discord dimmed her children's toil and rest. Dawns at last a brighter day. Stretching out a glad new way. May the good Lord bless our island, God her sons from war and harm. May our people live united, strong in arm and strong in soul. Justice be and charity our ideals forever be. Now, for our closing in him, when we all, you see, I'm so excited to get to heaven, I can't wait. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you for your attendance here this afternoon. Everybody get home safely. Bright and listen, He'll prepare for us a place when we all when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us. Soon Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. When we all, when we all see Jesus, We'll sing and shout the victory.
Join us, St. Lucia, as we celebrate Independence 43. Tuesday, February 15th, Voices of Independence panel discussion series. Wednesday, 16th February, the renaming of the Entrepreneur Human Resource Development Center. Thursday, 17th to 21st February, is Live Art, Live Art at Constitution Park, an artist village. Friday, February 18th, National Colors Day. Day. Then, the 18th and 19th, and the 22nd, be welcoming. Sunday 20th, Praise and Worship Ecumenical Service. The 20th to 22nd, tune in to Dubai, Dubai for the St. Lucia Showcase called My Island Home. On Tuesday the 22nd, Independence Day, it's the Military Parade. And then a virtual cultural extravaganza. Wednesday 23rd, tune in to NTN for an Independence Lecture by Dr. Thiricus Jules. Thursday 24th February, Nourishing Helen, a program by Helen's Daughters, 9 p.m. on Choice TV. Saturday 26th, Legacy, Legacy. Double Glory, Glory. Kaiso and Soka. And Sunday, March 13th, the National Independence Awards Ceremony. A full calendar of programs and events to celebrate St. Lucia's 43rd National Independence. 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 View our social media platforms at 758 Independence for the complete listing of events. Let's celebrate Independence 43.